Welcome to Pure Art Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. I believe that we are living in a critical hour and that we are about to see the great awakening of the church. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says that there's nothing new under the sun. That which has been is that which will be again. If we go back to the 1850s, there is an incredible, striking parallel to what's going on today. And if you look in the early 1850s, there was a boom period, and the world started to become one. There started to be the global economy where nations were working together uh, with free trade agreements, etc. And we saw the expansion out west. Railroads were being built, uh, and, and you can consider like the networks of today. And there was great expansion going on, and the economies were booming. Men turned from God. At the same time, there was the Millerite um, situation where a Baptist minister had preached that Christ would come in 1844, and he got it wrong. This caused a great backlash in the church. Many believers backslid and become very embarrassed, and there were violent attacks against the church over that. It was referred to as the Great Disappointment. But everything was about to change, and God began to stir and put in the hearts of certain people to begin to pray. And it's interesting, a man named Jeremy Lampier, uh, who was in New York, he was hired to go door to door, a businessman, and basically invite people to the church, because the churches were closing in Manhattan, because business was growing, and um, they were trying to grow the numbers of people in the church because numbers were failing. He has a burden to start this prayer meeting, this new prayer meeting that would go on for one hour. Many thought it would fail, but his timing was that of the Lord. And a series of events started to occur in 1857 that would change everything. First, it all started with the Ohio Insurance and Trust Bank, which um, defaulted. It was no longer or failed and was not able uh, um, to support all the mortgages that it had, a similar crisis that we just saw here in the U.S. All of a sudden, there was a sinking of a boat that contained gold, and banks couldn't get their hands on precious gold, uh, and so started to default on payments, and making payments and giving, providing people their money back. Um, we saw the expansion, all the investment that had gone into the expansion of the West drying up, and the global economy slowed down. The overgrowth could no longer be supported, and everything changed. This boom that had occurred in the early 1850s came to a very quick end in the fall of 1857, and a crisis ensued. At the same time, uh, the Dred Scott case occurred where the Supreme Court made a ruling uh, against Dred Scott, which really provoked slavery issues in the United States and caused this, this slavery to become a major issue and racial issues to uh, grow. So we started to see in America um, riots and other things as people began to protest as jobs were being lost and, and people could not get access to money, there was no investment left, and a global crisis began. Um, but in the midst of it, God began to move. And so we see that God started to get people praying. And through people like jo uh, Jeremy Lanfear, who started this New Day prayer meeting, that would get people gathering together, something that looks so small and insignificant, but God just looks for a spark. And when I look at Great Awakenings, previous Great Awakenings brought about a great understanding of democracy, which encouraged people to challenge authority correctly, and for freedom of press that should be unbiased. Today in our society, we see similar things. We see a global economy that suddenly stalled. We see racial issues again. Uh, we see a media that is biased and not reporting correctly, and a political crisis going on. Similar things that they saw in the 1857. At that time, the church returned to him and began to seek him, and God began to turn up, and people saw conviction. They started to shake off the God of Mammon and all the securities that they had built and turn back. In this hour, the church needs to turn back to God and as said, they had been disappointed and disencouraged because they expected God to come in 1844. He didn't. We expected God to come around the year 2000, and He didn't. But God is about to move in a powerful way, and it starts as we, the church, humble ourselves. A revival that started, an awakening that started in a simple church prayer meeting at noon that would go global and start prayer meetings all around the world. So often we talk about getting out and reaching the lost, but it must start when we first return to Him and repent and we get right with Him. I cannot win the lost. 
but God can use me if I am a surrendered vessel. And simple actions can do powerful things. So as we return to Him and allow the Holy Spirit to convict and change and challenge us, to transform us from glory to glory and to conform us into His image, and we stop trying to build our agendas and start seeking to build His, God will begin to use us. And like in 1857, I believe that they will say regarding 2017, it's the year of the Great Awakening. What was powerful about the Great Awakening, it wasn't just that people got changed People got utterly wrecked by God, convicted of their wretched state, and totally turned around. That's what we need. Too many people stick their foot in the bucket and taste God and say, oh, that's awesome. But that's as far as they go. It's time for a radical change. And let it start with the church where we jump in the bucket. We recognize the wretch that we are by the Holy Spirit and the awesome power of His mercy and the blood. And we come back to the blood of Jesus and let the blood change us and that we are transformed so that we now can carry a message under the Lordship of Jesus. That we preach Jesus and Him crucified. It's all must go back to the cross and we must start by going back to the cross ourselves. Prayer time must be us, in secret, going back to the cross and realizing we need the power of the cross in our life so that the power of the cross can be demonstrated in this society and a worldwide global awakening may occur. What society needs is not a political change, not a political answer, but it needs Jesus. The society we live in today needs the healing, glorious power of Jesus. It's the gospel and gospel only that can save lives, change lives, and turn this thing around. We have that. So it's time for us to get passionate and to get a holy desperation for God and let the Holy Spirit come, convict us, and as Evan Roberts said, let the church bow, let the church be broken first, and all hindrance removed from us so that God can move us. And let's get excited and get ready because God is about to move in 2017, I believe, in a powerful awakening that's going to hit the world and change things and turn things around. But I will say this, that when God turns up, so does His presence. And when His presence turns up, so does judgment. Remember, the Holy Spirit comes to convict of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. In the Old Testament, they realized when the presence was there, there was a danger of judgment. We must walk right in the holy fear of the Lord because as God turns up, so does His presence. And when His presence turns up, we are on the verge of judgment because you either turn and see God's great mercy and His great goodness or His judgment comes. This nation, judgment has been building for a long time and God is about to move first in His great kindness and mercy to save as many and reach as many. And let us be part of that and let us humble ourselves and return to the cross and stand the gap for this generation that as many as possible will come to the knowledge of Jesus. I pray that you will see the parallels that are occurring right now between now and 1857. And right now, God is beginning to stir His church and move in His church and He's awakening His church. I hear, pray that you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Return to your first love. Come back. Let your eyes be open. Let your ears be open, let you get a hearing heart, and let us be in tune with heaven, and let us be the vessels God can use by coming back to the cross, and letting the power of the cross work in us, so that the power of the cross can work in our society, and bring forth the real answer. I pray you're blessed, challenged, and provoked in the name of Jesus. Thank you.